Recent snow has given a wintry feel to the hills of the West Highlands. However, patches that historically have lasted all year are disappearing at a faster rate than ever before. The most durable patch of snow in Scotland is called the Sphinx. This year, again, it's disappeared for the third time in five years, having only done so a few times, probably in the last few hundred years. So we are noticing big, big changes in the longevity of these patches of snow in general. In your mind, is there any doubt that this is down to climate change? I'm not a climatologist, nor even uh, an academic. However, if you look at the data, and if you look at a lot of the studies that have been published, the climate is definitely changing. The world is warming, and it's logical in a warming world that something which exists right on the margins, such as Scottish snow patches, are going to suffer, and I think that's what we're seeing. Nature has a key role when it comes to addressing climate change. A fifth of Scotland's landmass is peatland, which absorbs carbon in the same way as forests. However, 80% is degraded, so it's now estimated to emit carbon on a scale equivalent to all of Scotland's homes. The waters around our coast are also crucial to the natural carbon cycle. They store around half of Scotland's total annual greenhouse emissions. After transport, Agriculture and land use are the biggest source of our carbon emissions in Scotland. So there's a lot that we need to do in this space in order to meet our climate targets. There's lots that we need to get right, but there's lots we're currently getting wrong. The hope is, though, that if we start to see investments and the right policies put in place, then we can actually turn this around and we can actually turn nature into the climate hero it needs to be. The Scottish Government has set itself a legal target of reaching net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2045, five years ahead of the UK as a whole. In 2019 it reported a reduction, but fell short of where it aimed to be for the third consecutive year. That leaves a lot of work to meet its interim target of 75% by 2030. Ministers believe carbon capture technology is crucial to achieving that goal. However, the proposed site in Aberdeenshire has missed out on the UK's first wave of carbon capture development. Scotland now effectively generates almost all of its electricity from renewables. But if it's to meet those targets on cutting emissions, the challenge is to decarbonise the rest of the energy sector, how we heat our homes and how we power our vehicles. Here they're working to harness this renewable power to generate what's known as green hydrogen. We take wind, we take water, we take hydrogen, and that's going to give us a zero emission clean fuel for the future. This is the UK's largest onshore wind farm, a few miles south of the COP26 venue. We have to show that we can replace petrol and diesel and some of the fossil fuels that we use in industry. So we need to create great green hydrogen from onshore wind farms like this. So we're electrifying everything that we can, that's the most efficient way to do it. But when you get to things like train journeys in the very north end of Scotland or difficult parts of industry, that's where we need hydrogen. And green hydrogen is going to help us on that decarbonisation journey. At this site in Orkney, they're using hydrogen created by tidal and wind energy to generate electricity to power ferries. The sector believes further investment could have economic as well as environmental benefits. It suddenly created jobs in the hydrogen space and we built something of a bit of a hydrogen ecosystem where we're using it for heating and for planes and for shipping and a variety of different things. So we can see that what we've created is a bit of a glimpse of the future. Scotland's links with oil and gas means it's in a strong position to make the transition to cleaner energy. This company specialises in measuring the flow of fuels like petrol or domestic gas. However, it's now shifting the focus from its long-standing ties with fossil fuels. Because we have that standing experience, we've been able to, to translate that over to hydrogen um, quite, quite readily. And it, it, it's really necessary that, that we do that if, if the UK is going to achieve net zero. We are now getting lots of inquiries from many other parts of the world who are looking at what we're doing and saying, OK, what, what can we learn from you? How can you help us? How long will it take to make that transition away from fossil fuels towards greener energy like we're seeing here? So it will take decades. Um, and it's important that we don't, um, we don't see a cliff edge, um, that we don't uh, shut down companies, uh, shut down our industry early, uh, that it's a fair and managed transition so that we take, that we provide the time that's needed to help uh, people 
change their, change their jobs. There is a debate raging at the moment over whether this managed transition can be compatible with the planned new oil field off Shetland. Oil exploration is a matter reserved to Westminster, and the UK government is currently reviewing whether the Campbell project will definitely go ahead. Scotland has been at the forefront of the renewable revolution. However, to meet its emissions targets, ambition will need to be matched with further action. Only then will COP26 be considered a turning point to a greener future, rather than a tipping point to climate catastrophe.